I'm Mason Mount. You're listening to the London is Blue podcast. You know, we can get into the the overalls, but I really would just want to right away pick out one Kurt Happy Zuma. Um, someone who we probably been shouting from the sidelines to bring in after the restart because the back line just wasn't doing enough. Obviously today you could say still not doing enough, but from an individual performer, uh, I was told on Twitter that he had a pretty decent day. I would say that commander Kurt had a very good day in our back line. I think when you look at some of the stats, we saw uh, five eight out of eight aerial duels won, two out of four ground duels, six out of ten long balls completed, six clearances, three interceptions, two tackles, and one extremely well-blocked <laughs> shot at the very death of the match, the most perfectly timed. Man, I love me some Kurtzuma. I love me a Kurtzuma slide tackle save. They are just – ah, they are wonderful. There they is, are delicious. That there, I don't think that there's a worse case scenario than that. Christian Benteke, our center back's way far away. He turned, and I think he was caught off guard with how much space he had. Took a slightly heavy touch. But the speed, Nick, in which Kurt Zuma cut down the distance between him and Benteke – and then destroyed everything in his path. Ball, player, probably pitch. Referee might have been hit for all I know. Dude just, <laughs> just destroyed everything in his path. I, I watched the Sandlot last weekend for the 4th of July, which is a, a good tradition to have. And it reminded me of when Benny hit the cover off the ball. Yeah. In, in you know, the middle of the movie. I, I was surprised the ball was still inflated with how hard he came in. <laughs> like it was, and I, I originally, the damn app that I have on my TV skipped to, like I didn't see the pass go in to Benteke. Oh. So I skipped in and Benteke just has the ball there and the announcers <laughs> are yelling. And I was like, what the hell just happened? What just happened? And then I, well, as soon as I saw Zuma come in, I thought it was a penalty. I, th- I thought he had given away a penalty because there was just so much commotion going on. But, I mean, upon all the 50,000 replays that they showed of that, it was as clean as clean can be. Like, I, it, unbelievable. Like, yeah. Really well done. And those points that he saved think- could prove very vital. There was a comment as I was looking at the – there was actually a thread on Reddit, on the soccer Reddit, for just the block shot, for Kurt's block shot. And the top comment was from a United fan talking about how Benteke was like a type of person who has to look at the keys at the keyboard as he types <laughs> because <laughs> Benteke just doesn't go forward with the ball. He looks down to validate that the ball is there <laughs> before trying to take the shot. And, and like that – Split second is all Kurt needed Jeez. to cover the space and take it out of his hands. This is part of why I was super frustrated, though, right? The dude had not scored at home in two years. We let him score. He probably should have had another one. And Kurt still had a good game. Like, that that's how up and down this performance was, and that's why both things can be true at the same time. Like, this guy hasn't scored. He's scored one goal in the Premier League all year, and it was away. Like, come on, guys. Like, I know that he's big. I know that he's good in the air. And I know that Kurt Zuma pocketed him for a large portion of the game, which is very hard to do because he actually has a couple of inches on Kurt from a high perspective. But, man, that's – it's just – those are mixed emotions that I'm sharing right now. Like, it's it's hard. Yeah, no, for sure. And and again, that's why we're kind of trying to signal out the individual performance of Kurt without, you know, taking in, into account the entire thing because um, we will. Uh, but if you head over to Instagram, one captain leader legend, John Terry, had a nice little applause for him, says, what a tackle at Kurt Zuma, fist emoji soccer ball, which is literally what Kurt did with his foot to that said <laughs> soccer ball. <laughs> And then Naz tweeting uh, Frank's post-match comments about Zuma right here saying, 
Lampard on Zuma, quote, it was fantastic for him. He played well versus Watford, imposing and defending the ball. Attackers get credit, and that's definitely what got us the points at the end, uh, end quote. And, you know, Keppa made a big save at the end, but at the end of the day, what Kurt has shown in the last, what is it, two matches – and before the break, too, to be fair to him. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, he lost his Everton. position. Yeah, so he was coming back, right? I mean, to, the rest of the season, I know it's only four matches. Like, undroppable? Add him to that list? Undroppable. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a ridiculous proposition to watch what he's done in the last two matches and go, yeah, we got two guys better than him. One thing I think I didn't realize is Kurt's aggression – like, Rudiger doesn't bring it like Kurt does. It is a whole different level. Like, the way he just gets up in the back of defender uh, attackers and literally pushes them five yards mm-hmm. further away, which makes him so uncomfortable trying to settle the ball. You know, again, the way he attacks the ball in the air makes you not want to go for it because you're like, I don't want to get in the way of that. I don't want to get clobbered by the whole Yeah. Thing. I mean, and Ben Teke, I think he tried to pull out at the end, but it was too late, you know, because he saw – missile flying (laughs) yeah just coming in and that's the fear that like these hard tackling no nonsense center backs can play with like you know frank has got to be loving that that side of it as well because again it makes attackers always go where is he they're always looking over the shoulder worrying that that tackle's coming in and they don't see it coming well it, it reminds you dan that there are a couple of different ways to play this position, right? Kurt Happy Zuma is much more Teddy Roosevelt, speaks awfully, carry a big stick, right? Not gesticulating all over the place, not yelling at people, handling his business like a grown man. And then there are other players who are more on the vocal side, which isn't a bad thing either, by the way. Like, you, you definitely need to communicate, but maybe are less in your face about, you know, some of the defending aspects. And I just think it's really important whoever is paired with him has to do a lot of the talking because he, you know, it just doesn't seem like he's, he's that guy. He just wants to go like see ball, hit ball, right? Like that's, that's good. We're, we're in the position where yes, it would be great to be choosy around center backs, right? We want the, the ball playing center back. You know, we, we want to have this really fluid attack. We want them to kind of help push the team forward in that regard we leak like a sieve in the back, right? This has been a area of challenge for the team the entirety of the season. And you know what? We've got four more matches left in the Premier League this season, as Brandon talked about. I I don't need sexy passing from center backs at the moment. I need no nonsense defending to keep out goals so that we can claim maximum points, get into Champions League, sign Kai Havertz, get some Declan Rice, and continue assaulting and destroying football next season because it's going to be delicious. I will agree with the beginning and the end of that statement. Absolutely, Dan. 